So for today, I just wanted to talk about um, color overrides on curves and on objects, uh, wireframe uh, displays and things like that. And uh, I wanted to just sort of go over some of the things that are done and why they work and why they don't work uh, and stuff like that. Um, so I'm just going to add some curves in here real quick. I just have a quick little script to add these guys in here. Nothing too exciting. I'll uh, parent them up. What? Oh, I forgot my capital I. There we go. Cool. So now I have these guys parented up. Kind of like an FK chain or anything else in Maya. Um, actually, I'll put a cube in here too. So show everything. There we go. Because um, you can colorize uh, the wireframes differently of objects as well. Or, uh, you know, nerves and, and polygons as well. Um, so what I want to talk about is that basically for the longest time, what everybody would do to, or they still do, <laughs> a very common thing to do is to use the drawing overrides on the um, DAG node of the object. And by me, my DAG node, I mean the actual, um, you know, translate rotate scale, not the shape underneath. I'll turn off shapes here. So what you normally see in your outliner, right? So if I do that, and I enable words on this, and I pick a color, uh, certain colors I avoid. So like the magenta is, a, is something that Maya already uses. Uh, white is something bright green. Um, even this soft green, I kind of uh, ignore. Um, so I'll choose yellow. Yellow is fine. Um, but you'll notice what happens is my children also got the same color, which is the reason I don't use it. Um, because if I want this to have a different color, I'll have to go in here and set it. And if I want this to have a different color, I'll have to go in and set it. Um, but it gets, it gets, you know, you're constantly overriding each other and stuff like that. It's just kind of annoying. Um, but more so, uh, the reason I don't use it is because if I put that, these objects in the display layer, uh, you notice that I lost coloration on my top object here. Um, and basically what's happening is the display layer, if I select it, oops, L-A-Y-E-R-1, and go to the attribute editor, you see that it has an uh, enable overrides on it as well. And that's where you get the colors and things like that. So if I take this object and I make it, let's say, a color that's not being used, this blue, um, whoops, get off a of reference. Cool. You see that it's changed that to blue, but these guys have not changed. Uh, and the reason for that is because their overrides are overriding the overrides, right? So uh, the top, the layer is overriding the original override of the first object that's in there. And then this is overriding the its own display layer override, and this is its own display override. Um, and then if I delete this out, you notice I've lost the display override on that original curve. Uh, I don't think this happens when the object is referenced, but it's still sort of annoying uh, when you're rigging and prototyping and stuff like that, and you're setting colors, you're going to lose those things. Um, the other thing is, if I go in here and say template this, you notice that only my top object got templated. Um, my other two did not, and that's because, again, they have those display overrides. So the only way around that is if I don't have them have any overrides, now everything will be templated as I would expect it to. The nice thing is visibility still works, um, but I do lose, lose those overrides. And in doing so, I've also now lost those colors because I've lost those overrides, right? Uh, I'll delete this again. Ba -da 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 -da. There we go. Cool. And you can, you know, do objects as well. So if I go in here and, you know, I can make an object color or something like that. Um, now, the other thing you can do is, and I thought, okay, uh, Maya added the ability to do RGB instead of index on these overrides, uh, which is cool because you can go in here and like pick some sort of color that do doesn't normally exist uh, in the, you know, the index colors. The index colors are, are restricted to those 32 colors, and we do that, and that's all cool, uh, but it has the same problem, throw in a layer and uh, make it templated, can still select it, make it reference, can still select it. Um, hiding still works, which is good. Um, delete the layer. And you've lost the top color, but you have the other two. Um, it's not great, 
so I had, you know, I was hoping that non-index colors would work a little bit better. Um, so for that reason, I don't use it on that either. Um, so what I started doing, because I thought I was super clever, is to not lose that top color, I would just go to the curve shape instead. I'd go enable overrides, you know, pick a cool color. You notice it doesn't affect my children. Um, they too can have overrides and, you know, have a cool color. There we go. Again, doesn't affect the children. Um, but then I ran into the same problem again because their overrides are overriding. Did I not put that in there? Just delete layer one, layer two. Okay, good. Uh, again, templating, not working. Referencing, not working. Because the shapes override is overriding. The layers override. It's a lot to say. So I was super bummed. Because I was like, oh, man, I thought I had it. So then, uh, a couple versions ago, Maya added something really cool under display. You can go to wireframe color. And I've used indexed colors for years. So it's zero through eight. It's had it since day one. Uh, but they added RGB, so it gives the ability to go in here and choose, again, any color you want. Make sure you don't drop the object. If you do, um, when you go back to select it in this wireframe color, it resets itself. A little bit of annoying. So you got to go back to RGB, double-click on this, pick the color, say done, say apply, so you make sure you have it. Um, so I was like, oh, that's super cool. I have no idea where it saves this information, um, but it's really cool that, to have it. Uh, the problem is, is if I duplicate this, and actually you even saw the window do that, and I move it over, you notice that I've lost all my colors. Um, I guess it's just a bug in my... Now, when it first came out, I rigged all my characters with all these cool colors. I was super excited. I ended up doing like 20 characters with the colors, um, and I put it out in the world, and the animators were like, oh, this is cool. And they're like, can you colorize the curves on the controls? They're all black. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? And I would bring a character in who would look fine. But the second I brought in a second character, all the colors would turn black on all the characters. So there's some sort of bug in there. And it's super bummer because that means your colors just get blown away. It doesn't work. Um, so what is the solution? Um, so I'm back to doing what I used to do for years which is to just use those index colors. So if you go under to that display and go to wireframe color, you can choose a color and apply it. Um, what I tend to do is actually go down and use the shape node, just arrowing down. Uh, now I get these colors. Now you notice the, the main problem with them is they're pretty muted. Um, I'm gonna go to a display layer, put a display layer on. The nice thing is if I template, they template. If I reference, they reference. If I uh, override the colors, they get overridden. If I delete them, delete this layer, I get my colors back to where they were. If I duplicate this object, they all maintain the colors as they should. The problem is they're muted. Um, you can jack them up, but again, you put this out in the world. If the, the animator has the default settings, they're going to get default colors. But I'll show you how to update those colors if you want. So if I go to Window, Settings, Preferences, Color Settings, this is closed by default, but you have in here all your colors in Maya. And if you go to User Defined, these are the colors that you're using. So if I take this, I can jack these guys up and make them more exciting. Which color is that? That's that weird greenish color. There we go. And you can even go in here and change these colors to anything you want. So if I go in here, I can make it a really hot uh, orange instead. Make this somewhat of a brighter yellow. Um, I didn't set anything as yellow. <laughs> I can make that purple. Let's get it a little more vibrant purple. There we go. Um, here, let's set this guy as yellow so you see what it looks like. That yellow. And it's cool because the UI updates as well so you can see the differences there. Whoops. I didn't do the shape again. Cool. And, you know, since I'm doing this all the time, I did make myself a little window to do that for myself. So I don't know why, but I was silly. So this original one down here is the original indexed RGB colors. This is display layers if I the override, if I want to use an override. Um, but what I do have it do by default is to put that override on the shape node. So if I have another curve here and I 
parent it, that second curve is going to remain the right color. Um, I've been okay with this, uh, mainly because a lot of animators I find don't necessarily um, use the display, you know, the, the template and reference. So if you're not using that, um, you're fine. But, you know, just know that your display, your, those display settings aren't going to work. Um, and then basically from there, um, I use that same pattern to make uh, these colors here, which are all the ones based on, um, you know, using the, the, the RGB colors that I just showed under the new palette. Um, and this should work. I put that at 0x. If I grab these, you know, I can auto color them, stuff like that. Uh, I can also call, auto color them if they're, um, you know, using the display overrides below. Uh, just a quick way to make them bigger and smaller. Um, also to make them thicker and thinner. Um, you know, or randomize them, which apparently is broken. <laughs> um, oh, this was kind of a fun one. I could get the color and then match the color. Wait, is that how I did it? Yeah, like that. Haven't used that in forever. Uh, set them back to the defaults. Uh, and I do have the access to that little window here. Uh, this is really easy to make. I can show you how to make that. Um, anyway, so after all this, uh, what's the answer? I don't know. I still don't mind using, um, you know, the index colors, even though they're boring. Why is everything going yellow or going orange? Hmm. I haven't used that in a long time. I wish I could use these cool colors, but I can't. Um, so for now, I'm going to stick to, you know, colorizing the shape nodes. And, uh, what I'll probably do is add some more buttons so I can get some of those RGB colors there instead. And just hope that nobody, you know, hopes to template it and doesn't. All right. So hopefully that bug will get fixed in Maya for the display wireframe colors. And, uh, I hope this was helpful to somebody. All right. Thanks.